Thanks, Mahesh, for the introduction. My name is Peter Q. I will be the last presenter for this session. I'm currently an acting director in the Division of Biotechnology Manufacturing in the Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. By now, you have heard of the previous presentation on pre approval inspections for NDAs and NDAs. Now, I'm going to talk about the pre license inspection for a biological product. So in my presentation, I will cover those four areas. The regulatory definition of biological products, highlight some uh, regulatory requirements for biological products submitted in the BOA. Then of course, I will talk about uh, the pre-approval pre-licensing special program in CEDAR. I will end with some examples for common deficiencies found during our application review and our inspections. What is a biological product? First of all, I want to mention that unlike NDA and NDAs, biological products are licensed under the Section 351 of Public Health Service Act or PHS Act. The PHS Act also provides a definition of a biological product as stated in, in this slide. I'm not going to read the entire definition, but I just want to point out some recent amendments made to the PHS Act. The Act was amended this year to include protein as a biological product, which is defined as any alpha amino acid polymer with a specific defined sequence that is greater than 40 amino acids in size. In addition, the Biologics Prize Competition and Innovation Act or BPCI Act of 2009 which also included a deemed to be a licensed product. Those are biological products that were previously approved under the Section 505 of the FDNC Act on or before March 23, 2020. Now those products are deemed as BIAs. You can find more information about those deemed to be a licensed product on the FDA's website. Biologics products are regulated at both CBER and CEDAR, CBER by Center for Biologics, CEDAR Center for Drugs. Here I provide a list of product types that are regulated by CEDAR. Those are include two main areas, monoclonal antibodies for in vivo use, most therapeutic proteins such as interferons, enzyme, and other novel proteins for therapeutic use. But we also regulate uh, immunomodulators and uh, growth factors in CEDAR. What are the requirements for obtaining a, bio, a BOA license for biological product? As stated in the 21 CFR 601.4, prior to issue a license, the FDA must determine that the product, the manufacturing process, and the manufacturing facility must meet the standards stated in the regulations. In addition, for a BOA, the applicant must complete the commercial scale process performance qualification studies or PPQ studies and submit the data in the application. You can find more information about the requirements for process validation in the, in the FDA's 2011 guidance uh, on process validation, which is also available on our website. Another requirement is uh, each manufacturing facility must be ready for inspection and is manufacturing the product in support of pre-licensing inspection. I'm going to talk more about the pre-licensing inspection in later on in, the, uh, in this uh, presentation. The last thing I want to point out in this slide is uh, for BOAs, we do not accept application that referencing uh, drug master files or DMF files for drug substance, drug substance intermediate, or drug product with some exceptions for uh, those deemed to be licensed product. Again, if you want to know more about this, you can go to our website, uh, find this information on the requirement for DMF files. Another area I want to talk about is uh, aseptic processing. As you know, all know that almost all the biological products are sterile injectables and uh, have to be manufactured using aseptic processing due to the nature of those products. 
So it is very important to understand the GMP requirements as well as well as a summation requirement for those type of products. Here I include two very useful uh, FDA guidance on aseptic processing. The 2004 guidance describes the GMP requirements for aseptic processing according to the 21 CFR 210.211 when manufacturing steroid drugs and the biologics using aseptic processing. The 1994 guidance describes information required in a BLA to support a steroid assurance. So this, uh, this included the identification of the manufacturing areas and the type of filling lines. We need to know that if the product is filled in an isolated wraps, open or closed wraps, or just a conventional open filling room, which we consider very high risk for potential contamination. You also need to provide information about the surrounding areas, classifications. For example, you have a grade A area surrounded by grade B or C areas. So this information should be included in the application. And also you need to provide the data for uh, on the sterilization and the depathogenation for product contact equipment, container closure systems, and other components. Uh, again, you provide information on, on media fields, uh, number of batches. We usually expect three successful batches of media field data. Uh, your investigation for uh, if that policy of growth and the procedures for media field including interventions. You also need to provide the data to demonstrate the integrity of container closure systems and also other method va uh, validation data and also release criteria. Now I'm going to switch to uh, inspections. As you know, inspection is a, a critical part of a BOA assessment to evaluate the product quality and obtain or observe manufacturing operations under GMPs. The 600 regulations provide a, a regulatory authority for uh, conducting for us to conduct uh, uh, pre-licensing inspections. 21 CFR 600.21 talks about the timing of inspections. Inspections should be conducted while the establishment is uh, in operation and is manufacturing the completed product. 21 CFR 601.20 provides the regulatory requirements before issuing a biological license that includes a product examination to determine that they are in compliance with regulatory requirement. Product should be available for inspection during all phases of manufacture and uh, conducting uh, inspection to determine each facility is in compliance with a regulatory requirement. When a seed review team evaluates a facility associated with a BLA to determine if an inspection is required, we consider risks in the following areas. So first on the facility side, we look at the prior inspection history for that facility. It is a new facility, a new building, or a new filling line without FDA inspection history. Does it have experience with similar manufacturing process, for example, uh, prior ex experience with biotech manufacturing and uh, aseptic filling for drug product. Are there any information available from other regulatory authorities that covers similar manufacturing operations? So we take all of this, that, all of those information to evaluate that facility. We also look at uh, GMP issues if they are relevant uh, to this product. So this means we will assess previous observations to see if there are any relevance to this application. We assess the product risk, for example, it is a potent or toxic product. Is there any concern with uh, cross-contamination? Novel technologies, for example, if the application uses like for the uh, continuous manufacturing or single-use technologies, those are considered high risk. And uh, process complexity. So one example is, I would say, uh, antibody drug conjugates. That's uh, relatively high risk. and uh, Application specific concerns, uh, any uh, issues identified during application review, for example, data concerns, get the data to, to be true, that will trigger inspection. 
And the last one I want to say is uh, is if there's any if there's any significant process changes. This is mainly for uh, post approval changes, supplements. So in addition to conduct the on-site inspections, we do have uh, other alternative approaches to uh, on-site inspections. This is really based on the holistic assessment of the site and the applications. You probably have heard the uh, records review in the 704A4 of the FDNC Act in advance or in lieu of inspection. This is also, we also use that for BRA inspections. We also consider uh, on-site inspection waivers this again based on the could be based on the uh, records review in lieu of inspection, prior inspection history of this facility and the experience of uh, with similar manufacturing product uh, process at this facility. Again, the, de the decision will be made by the entire CMC review team as part of the holistic assessment of the application and the manufacturing side. As a sponsor or applicant, how to prepare for a pre-licensing inspection? First of all, we highly recommend that before you submit a BOA, you engage early communication or discussion with the agency. This is really important if uh, the product is under some kind of expedited review program, for example, breakthrough drugs. So we can have early discussion with the sponsor on the manufacturing facilities and the timing of inspections. It is also very important to provide the production schedules in the application for, I'm talking about for drug substance and drug product uh, manufacturing, uh, manufacturing sites. If you receive the IR from us, and uh, please make sure that you provide a timely response. So this will help us to uh, plan our inspections. You could also consider conducting a uh, market inspections to assess the site's readiness for uh, inspection, and also verify the information submitted in an application is complete, accurate, and uh, consistent with the site records. Of course, uh, the site should be ready for inspection uh, upon submission. Now I'm going to share with you some common deficiencies we found during application review and also on inspections. On the uh, submission side, uh, I just want to mention that uh, some of those uh, deficiencies I'm going to discuss in this slide are also consider filing issues. So one, one example is uh, PPQ studies will not compete to support the submissions. This really include like uh, incomplete PPQ studies, uh, PPQ batches failed and the data in the application that could not demonstrate a consistent manufacturing process. As I said before, that uh, usually we uh, expect three successful PPQ batches with the data in the application. Another thing is uh, changes were made to the manufacturing facility or the manufacturing process after completion of the PPQ studies. That puts a question about the, the validity of the PPQ studies. Uh, there's no uh, production schedule during the review cycle to support the pre-licensing inspection. And then this is a filing issue. And the missing data or insufficient data to support uh, uh, sterility assurance. Failed to submit uh, equipment qualification, for example, uh, autograph qualification, process simulation, media field data was, uh, did not include three media field data and uh, missing testing method validation data. Another common deficiency, deficiency is a uh, discrepancy between the information submitted in an application and uh, the manufacturing process performed at a site. This is a uh, common deficiency for uh, some CMOs. So we really want you to make sure that uh, before you submit the application, the information is complete in the application is complete, accurate, and consistent with the site records. For uh, inspection deficiencies, first I want to talk about the quality oversight. We have seen some inexperienced CMOs or sponsors that don't really understand each party's responsibilities for application and also inspections. For example, that the sponsor and the CMO, they don't really know 
who is responsible for investigating deviations, OSs, and our release batches. Quality units don't really review the complete release data before release batch release. They don't look at uh, audit trails and, of course, inadequate uh, investigation or deviation and OS and the CAPA uh, implementation plans. Uh, data reliability. This is another concern, unfortunately, that we are seeing more in the biotech areas. So we have seen as a, a size manipulating sample preparation and the testing procedures to obtain favorable results. We sometimes can, uh, can identify those issues in the application review. This is as we call, we call the data too good to be true. So if, if we find this kind of incidents during the inspection, we will pay extra attention to those data and to make sure those, uh, the data is completely accurate. We're seeing a deletion of electronic data, including uh, audit trails, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally done. Operators were, were given uh, admin privileges so they can access data files to delete the data, even the complete file. Aseptic processing deviations. Observing the aseptic operation is a major activity for our pre-license inspection at, for, at the drug product site. So here I share with you uh, some common deficiency, deficiencies we observed over the years. One, year is, uh, one example is the smoke studies. So by now, we're hoping that most manufacturing sites should already know what should be covered in a, a smoke study. However, we're still see, uh, seeing a lot of critical deficiencies in the smoke studies. For example, that smoke study only covered the static conditions, missing uh, setup activities, no simulation for dynamic conditions, no interventions. And this is especially important if the filling operation is the open filling with a lot, a lot of interventions. Media field does not simulate the entire manufacturing operations. So one example is, uh, as you know, during routine productions, Often the manufacturing process is designed to include a final purge step to push the product out of the vessel or tubing to minimize product loss. However, during the media field, this is generally not a concern. So I have seen years uh, the media program, media field program is designed to skip the final purge step. So in other words, the purge step is never simulated in a, a media field. This is a, a major issue. Inadequate environmental monitoring, for example, there's no EM during uh, filling line setups. Inadequ inadequate aseptic process, uh, practice, uh, excessive, excessive movement during the filling operations, inadequate graph disinfection prior to uh, touching the sterile product contact equipment. In summary, as I present here, there are some DOA specific regulatory requirements with regard to data submitted in an application and on inspections. So, uh, for example, uh, commercial scale PPQ studies have to be completed and the data submitted in the application. Products should be available for examination and inspection during all phases of manufacturing. In general, a pre license or pre approved inspection is required for a DOA and certain supplements for us to evaluate the product quality and observe manufacturing process, uh, processing, to verify compliance with uh, commitments made in the applications, and also to meet the GMP requirements. Here is my contact information. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to contact me. So this uh, concludes my talk and the first session. We will take a brief break so we can take a look at your questions and we'll be back to answer your questions. Thanks.